Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel and I'm going to be answering in this video a question from the Solomon C paper for P3 or for all C3. This is question number six, which also is question number three for my end of topic worksheet for P3 number five or for chapter five of P3 exponentials and logarithms. And this question is about a function f of x equals 4 minus lin 3x. x is an element of the real numbers and x it must be greater than 0, of course. Otherwise, this will be undefined. The lin of something can never be... You can't have the lin of something that is 0 or negative. Solve the equation of f of x equals 0. So that's a pretty simple starting question. You have to just equate this to 0 and find the value of x for which that's true. So you have 4 minus lin of 3x is equal to 0. So let's make lin x the subject. So lin of 3x is equal to 4. Okay, so that's making lin of 3x the subject. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to use the fact that lin actually means the log to the base e of something. So this is log to the base e of 3x equals 4. So we can rewrite this as e to the power of 4 equals 3x. Okay, and that's using the fact that the definition of logarithms, log to the base a, b equals c, means this a is the base, this c is the power, and this b is like the result. So e to the power 4 equals 3x. So we can rewrite this as 3x is e to the power 4. And so there we found the value of x. x is going to be 1 third e to the power 4. So that's the answer for part A of this question. Okay, now we go to part B where it says sketch the curve y equals f of x and the, the equation is um, f of x equals 4 minus the lin of 3x. Okay, that's the equation. Or that's the uh, function we're given, 4 minus lin of 3x. And they've told us x is all real numbers, but it has to be greater than 0. So when we sketch something like this, when we sketch a function like this, um, we have to be kind of think a bit clearly. So basically think about, let's say we have a function, let's call it some function like g of x. And let's look at what the origin of this function would be. Um, the origin of this function will be the lin of x. That's like, what well, you could say the parent function. And all these certain transformations have been applied to this which ended, ended up giving us 4 minus lin 3x. So we can think about um, dealing with that transformation. First of all, let's think about what y equals lin x looks like. Now, y equals lin x is the inverse of e to the power of x. e to the power of x is like an exponential curve going through 0, 1. So lin x is going to go through 1, 0. And it's going to have a shape like this. Okay, it can never go on the negative side, never, never touch 0, x, uh, x equals 0. Okay, so that's how y equals lin x looks. So this is y equals the lin of x. Okay, now, the first thing that's happened to this is um, you've got 4 minus lin 3x. You always start with transformations with what's inside the function, which is this part here. So it's like the x has been replaced by 3x. It's like you've got now g3x, which will give you the lin of 3x. So that's the next step in the transformation. Now, when you substitute something inside the function, Okay, then it affects the x values okay, of you know, the, the coordinates of the points on that particular graph. So this is going to change all the x values. And when you're multiplying, it's like a stretch. So it's going to cause a stretch of factor. And when it's inside the function, it's like the, you know, the opposite. So it's, it's not a stretch factor of a 3. It's a stretch factor of a third. So this is a horizontal stretch. A horizontal stretch. And the factor is equal to one third. So basically, this one is, is going to cross the x-axis now at a third instead of one. Okay, because you the stretch factor is a third. So it gets closer to the, the x values are all divided by three. So the new graph will have this type of shape. It's like a bit closer to the x-axis. All right, to the sorry, to the y-axis. Okay, so that's that part. And then the next thing that happens is it's things that are outside the function. So you can see it's been multiplied by minus 1. 
and four has been added to it. So you always deal with things outside the function in the same order as bidma. So you deal with the multiplication first. So the next thing that's happened, so the, that's how we started. So first that's happened to it. And the second thing that's happened to it, it's like you've got minus g of 3x. The whole thing's been multiplied by minus 1. So it becomes like minus lin of 3x. So basically when it's outside the function, it affects the y values. So all the y values change their sign and the x values stay exactly as they are. So basically what that causes is a reflection in the x-axis, a vertical transformation. All things which affect the outside of the function basically deal, uh, cause a vertical movement. So what's going to happen now is going to reflect in the x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. Whoops, that's not good enough. It has to be moving away from there. It's going to have this type of shape. Okay, it's going to look something like that. And this part will now be gone. So that's now minus g of 3x. And the next thing that happens is everything increases or raises you know, by 4 units. You add 4 to all the y coordinates. So the third thing is you've got minus g 3x and you've added 4 to it. And that's where you get 4. It's like plus 4 minus lin of 3x. And that's what we ended up with. So this is basically the transformation that's taken to pl place in this particular function. So this is our f of x now. This is what we have. So if you know, we think about it from the parent function and what's happened to it, we'll end up with this. So basically what this means is you add 4 to all the y coordinates. So this a third 0 is going to become a third 4. Okay, so basically the whole thing will lift up like this. So it's not going to cross to the x-axis at a third anymore. So I'm just going to redraw it slightly because it's going to be coming like um, a bit more, what's the word, steeper. It's going to become steep here, so it's going to it's going to like go a bit more like out outwards, something like that, okay? Because the part that that changes more rapidly is going to come up now. So this is going to the place where it crosses the x-axis. Now, what is that point where it crosses the x-axis? Well, it's when f of x equals zero. This is the function that we're drawing, and if we remember, part a was to solve f of x equals zero. Okay, so we can put here a third e to the power of 4, and if you want to put the y coordinate 0, that is the point where it crosses the x-axis. So this is the graph of y equals f of x. y equals f of x, the one that we were asked to draw. Okay, and there we have our answer. Okay, so that's part B done. All right, now part C. Part C is telling us to find an expression for the inverse function um, of this. So the, for, to find the inverse function, Basically, what we do is first we call y the f of x y. So I'm going to say y equals 4 minus lin of 3x. Then I'm going to replace the x with y and the y with x because when we are finding the inverse, we are basically changing the x axis into the y axis and the y axis into the x axis. Now, when I rearrange this formula and make y the subject, what, I'll be, what will come out there will be the inverse function. So I've got to make this y the subject of this formula. So let me first isolate this lin 3y term on its own. So I have lin 3y is equal to 4 minus x. Okay, I've just kept it on this side so it's positive. And then this side I've made for the other term. So 4 minus x is over here. Now again, using our understanding that the log of a to the power, log of a of b, log to the base a of b equals c, can become a to the power of c equals b and also our understanding that the lin of something is means the log to the base e of that thing the lin of x is log to the base e of x so this means the log to the base e of 3y equal to 4 minus x so this is basically what it means so just to make it clear this means log to the base e of 3y equals 4 minus x so if i want to now rewrite this in index form this is the base, this is the power, and this is the result. So I can say that means 3y is equal to e to the power of 4 minus x. So therefore, I can say y is equal to one third of e to the power of 4 minus x. And that is my inverse function. Once you found y on its own, what's left there is the inverse function. So it's a third 
e to the power of 4 minus x, and that's the answer for part C. Okay, now for part D, it says the function g is defined by g of x equals e to the power of 2 minus x. x is an element of the real numbers, and it says show that f of g of x is f of g of x is equal to x plus a minus lin b. So here's f of x from part a, and here's g of x, and we've got to find f of gx. Now f of gx is basically the composite function where you replace the, the x in the function f by what g is. So basically I've got to find this, what this means, what this means is f of gx. It means substitute g of x into the function f. So substitute this in place of this x that's what it means okay just as uh, if i had said find f2 it would mean replace this x with 2 that, that would be 4 minus lin 6 so fg of x means replace the x in the function f with whatever g of x is equal to so that's what it's telling us to do so basically f g of x is the same thing as substituting the whole of the function g of x into the function f so it's basically finding this f e to the power of 2 minus x, which means you've got to take this function, which is 4 minus lin of 3, and you replace the x with e to the power of 2 minus x. Now, we have to re rewrite this in this form. They want it in this form. Okay, so that's what they want us to do. So to write, rewrite in this form, we're going to use the laws of logarithms. Now, you know, there's three basic laws of logarithms which we're going to have to apply here. Now, one of the laws of logarithms, okay, that we're gonna, the first one I'm going to use here is the fact that, um, that's not straight, is it? What is that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it come out straight? I don't know. Anyway, so one of the laws of logarithms is that, say, lin of a, b is equal to the lin of a plus the lin of b, running out of space there. Okay, so the product can split up into the sum. Okay, so lin of a product of two things, as long as it has the same base, and of course lin is log to the base e. So the lin of a times b is the same as lin of a plus the lin of b. So what I can do is I can say that um, my f of gx is therefore equal to 4 minus, now I can split this up into a sum, but I've got a minus in front of it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a bracket there to protect it from that minus. So this will be lin of 3 plus lin of e to the power of 2 minus x. So I've basically got this, split this up into a product, but just kind of kept it away from that minus sign first. We'll deal with the minus afterwards. Okay, so now that will give me 4 minus, and keep the bracket there for now, lin 3. Now I can use the power law. I know that the lin of a to the power of k is the same as k times lin a using the power law that's another law of logarithms so i can take this power and write it as a product in front of the lin so this is 2 minus x times lin e now the other law the other fact i can use is that something to the base of itself the log to the base of something of itself will always equal 1 so log to the base a of a is equal to 1 so lin of e means log to the base e of e, which of course is also 1, because e to the power of 1 is equal to e. So I don't have to write lin e, that's going to be 1. So now what I have is I have 4, I'll keep the bracket there for now still, minus, and I have lin 3 plus 2 minus x, and now I can just deal with this minus sign. So I have 4 minus lin 3 minus 2 and plus x. Okay, how do they want us to express the answer? x plus a minus lin b. So they want the x first. So we're going to have for x plus the constant. So 4 minus 2 is 2 and minus lin 3. So we've expressed our answer in the form they wanted. And they said where a and b are integers to be found. So it's best for you to say a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. x plus a minus lin b. So we, we have the answer here for part D. So I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Um, other questions from this Solomon paper C will be found in the link that you'll see here on the uh, screen that comes up towards the end. And other questions from this topic of exponential and logarithms um, from P3 will be found in this 
link here and uh, you can subscribe to my channel from this icon that will appear here and on the top of the page there will be a card that should have been showing from the beginning of the video which will take you to a p3 pass paper um, thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon